All right, so we're going to review um, what we talked about yesterday, passive transport, active transport, um, and I think what makes what seems to make the most sense for you guys is if we have a mountain um, or a hill, and on that mountain or on that hill, we have um, a ball. If the ball is up high and it's moving from high altitude to low altitude, is it going to require energy? No. Are you going to have to add energy to get it down the hill? No. 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 If um, instead of, let's say, a blue ball, we have a green ball at the bottom down there where there's low um, altitude, or in this case of when we're talking about cells, low concentration, and you're trying to get it up to high concentration or push it into high concentration, what are you going to have to have? Energy. Yeah, force or energy. You're going to have to use energy, burn energy, to get it up the hill or into the cell. Either way, it's going to um, require energy. So that's active and passive um, transport. One, the standard that we talked about yesterday was this standard right here. It says, I can explain the different ways that particles, whether they're small, medium, or large, and uh, last week we talked about tiny, medium, or large, pass through the cell membrane. So I can explain how those things pass through the cell membrane. Today's standard, and we'll, we'll keep reviewing in a second, but today's uh, I can statement, rather, is going to be I can explain the difference between somatic cells and sex cells. Can you tell the difference between... Can y'all right now do answer this or say the statement accurately or truthfully? Mm -hmm. Can you tell the difference between or explain the difference between somatic cells and sex cells? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Can you compare and contrast my compare and contrast mitosis and meiosis? Is Anybody? It, isn't meiosis like oh, no. another word for reproduction? Um, okay, you're kind of in the right realm. Yeah. Um, at the end of today, you should be able to do both of these pretty well. Um, cancer, we talked about cancer being our phenomenon. We're actually going to watch a video that's going to take about eight minutes of our time, which is precious time. If, I'm watching a, if we're watching a video that, that, that is that long, that means it's important. Um, that's actually closer to nine minutes, I think. And you'll have access to view it later. I think you'll find it interesting. Honestly, when I watch it, I learn stuff. I learn stuff about cancer that I did not know before. Um, and the channel that we're going to look at is a really, really well-known or well, it's an accurate channel. Uh, so, again, these are the words we did yesterday. Uh, equilibrium, talked about it being balanced, um, passive and active transport, low and high concentration, uh, protein doorway, endo and exocytosis. If you don't, if you are not familiar with these words, if you're not comfortable explaining these words to your parents, to your dog, to your imaginary friend, to your pet rock, to me, if you're not comfortable explaining those, you need to be studying. Y'all understand? So we talked about passive transport, active transport, what diffusion was, um, endo and exocytosis. I would really recommend, if you can't see this very well on the screen, which the bulb's kind of dying out, this is a really good GIF. It's probably the best GIF or um, nonverbal way of, of, of understanding endocytosis. All right, and today, this is what we're doing. Cells making cells. Reproduction. So does anybody know any of these words up here? Yes. What are some words you know? Reproduction. So y'all are fam familiar with reproduction, all right? You should know this one too, right? DNA. DNA. Some of y'all know chromosomes. Now you know what the word daughter and parent are, but you probably you may not know what a daughter cell is or a parent cell is. These other words are probably new to you: mitosis, meiosis, somatic, gamete, um, parent cell, daughter cell. Most of these words are probably new to you. At the end of the day, you should have a good understanding of what they are. And do you think you should mention these in your reflection? Yes. Yep. Darn skipping. All right. Here we go. So we're going to watch this video, and if you'll notice, we've got some questions over here. What are some reasons cancer is bad? What is a tumor? What do cancer drugs? Uh, I'm sorry. Why do cancer? Why do some cancer drugs affect hair growth? And what happens if a cell doesn't pass a checkpoint? Those questions are for this video. So when we get to this video, you guys are going to open up your Chromebook and you're going to be um, answering these questions as we go. Um, this video that we're about to watch is one that you're just going to watch and you're just going to try to understand it. Here's why I can almost promise you. You're not going to understand everything that's in this video. Is that okay? Yes. 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 You're not even going to be required to learn all of the stuff that's in this video. What I want you to do, just like if you're watching a movie and somebody says a joke but you don't get the joke, are you just going to shut the whole movie, the rest of the movie, and not pay attention? No. No, if you don't get the joke, you just move on and try to enjoy the rest of the movie. 
Um, that doesn't mean you're dumb. It just means that you didn't get that joke. If you don't get one of the things they say, chances are you don't have to know exactly what they meant by that. Um, there's parts of this that I feel like I should know more, um, but there's parts of these videos that I don't understand everything, and that's okay. Like there's a part uh, in the second video that talks about P53, I think. Um, I don't know about that thing. I don't. I, I just don't, and that is okay. So when we're watching this, try to pay attention, even though it's going to be difficult to understand all of it 100%, probably impossible um, as, as far as today. So we're going to watch this video, um, be mindful of what's in there. We're actually going to skip two minutes of it from uh, between five and seven minutes. Uh, we're going to skip a two-minute section there. Um, so let's just let's go and watch this. All right, so quick review. After watching the, the large one there, the cell cycle about the cancer, a couple of um, things. So cancer is uncontrolled what? Cell growth, uncontrolled growth of cells, or uncontrolled mitosis of cells, you can think about it that way. If your cells go through a checkpoint, and instead of hanging out and trying to fix the problem, if there's a problem, or just um, uh, going through apoptosis, which is just essentially a self-destruct uh, system, instead of going through those two, if the cell's like, I don't really care anymore, I'm going to do what I want to do, I'm not going to sacrifice myself for the greater good, that is when cancer can happen. And again, that is oversimplification. Talk to, your, to a doctor, talk to somebody way smarter than Mr. Hurley. But that's what, a, that's what, that's what cancer is. is over, um, it's when the cell doesn't stop growing. It continues over and over and over and over and over. When you get a cut in your arm, the cells reproduce, but then they stop when the cut is fixed. These cells don't. They continue to grow and grow and grow. Um, so you should have answered those four questions. That's what's cool. Uh, my favorite part of that was the whole hair growth thing. Um, that's why hair's, hair gets killed out because it grows so fast, kind of like cancer, and the chemotherapy is targeting cells that reproduce quickly. So that's why hair, um, hair does that. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I want to um, draw something for you up here on the board. Um, and I may try to do this. On here, let's let's try this on here. So I'm going to draw two things for you. I'm going to draw mitosis and meiosis. And on your next slide, go ahead and tilt your screens down. On the next slide is going to be um, mitosis section and a meiosis section. At the bottom left, you'll see PMAT, the prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and some of the in, in between stages. You can see what an actual cell looks like if they dye it with certain colors and watch it go through. But what I'm about to draw for you is going to be um, mitosis over on the left side and then meiosis it's not letting me do a dot but mitosis and meiosis so mitosis I want you to remember this we're going to go through this and then I'm not going to show you this while we're taking notes I want you to talk to me if you have questions so mitosis um, it starts out let me back up. Mitosis's goal is to help your body continue to live. Guess what type of cells mitosis is going to make? Look at your I can statement. What type of cells do you think? Somatic. Somatic cells. Now, what is that another word for? Um, your body cells. So everything except for sperm and egg. Your body cells. Somatic means body cells. So mitosis... If your sister came up, your little sister came up and said, "Hey, what is an example of um, a cell or a, a part of the area, part of your body that goes through mitosis?" What would you say? I'm sorry. Yeah, you would say my toe, sis. Your toe. Mitosis is the answer to when she says, "Hey, what part of your body goes through mitosis?" You would say my toe, sis. You got it. Okay. All right. So mitosis starts out, because it's mitosis, it's going to start out with 46 chromosomes. That's how many chromosomes we have in all of our normal cells. It's how many? 46. Now, just like I said, to, to multiply myself, um, I would need to get two hearts and four lungs and two stomachs um, and two brains and all that, and I'd have to split in half. So what has to happen before this one cell can become two? What does it have to do? Starts with a D. D. Duplicate. Duplicate. So how many chromosomes are there going to be in here? Ninety-two. Ninety-two. Do y'all see that? Does that make sense? Where did it be for? What's 
Uh, we're just going to say chromosomes. Yes, just to just to keep, yes, you're right. You're talking about from the video. You're exactly right, guys. We're going to make kind of like I said over oversimplification. Um, we're going to use chromosomes as that term. If you went in high school or if you go into the field um, that's going to use this, you're going to be using more detailed, specific, more truly accurate words. We're just going to say chromosomes in general because um, I just want you to get the general understanding of this. So once it gets to 92, what's going to happen? It's going to divide. And how many chromosomes each? 46. Do you all see what we did? So we have, that is mitosis. That is mitosis. It's got a double, and then during mitosis, it splits. Technically, there's a little bit of interphase in here. That's when it's, everything's doubling, but we're just going to say this is mitosis. Mitosis is the process of making how many daughter cells? How many daughter cells are there there? Two. Two. Um, how many parent cells are there? One. One. Does the parent cell still exist anymore? No. No, it was literally split into half. Um, all right, then we're going to go over here to meiosis. Meiosis... Again, starts out with 46, because that's how many chromosomes we have. Now, if you're a banana, or a palm tree, or a spider, or a monkey, you're not going to have 46 chromosomes. You might have 223, uh, 22 chromosomes, or um, 58 chromosomes, or 4 chromosomes. But it's always, the percentage is always going to be the same. And I'll talk, we'll do that in a second. So, uh, first step for meiosis, it is going to duplicate. And so it's going to have how many again? Two. Ninety-two, and then it's going to look very similar to mitosis, and it's going to what? It's going to duplicate and have how many? Forty-six chromosomes, two cells, but forty-six chromosomes. And then this is where it's different. Now that so far looks very similar to mitosis. The biggest difference, the the takeaway from this, I want you to understand, is not necessarily the numbers in between. It is how many times or how many cells are being made? How many cells are being made in meiosis? How many daughter cells? How many daughter cells? Four. And how many chromosomes do they have each? If 46 splits in half, how many chromosomes is it going to have? 23. 23. Now, let me ask you a question. Is this a whole cell? Is this a whole human cell? What's what's different about this? What's wrong with this? Well, should what's, there's a red flag should be going off. What's wrong with this? No. Nope. This is this is a whole cell over here. What is this over here? Yes, this is a sex cell. Remember your I can statement. Your I can statement says I can explain the difference between somatic cells and sex cells. This is the production of a sex cell. Now, when two organisms, whether you're a flower or a butterfly or a human or a, a pine tree, whatever, there is a male sex cell and a female sex cell. So the male sex cell is going to have half of the chromosomes needed to make a, um, a normal organism. So for humans, how many chromosomes is a sperm cell going to have? 23. How many in an egg cell? 23. So when a sperm cell fertilizes an egg cell, what happens? You've got two halves of a cell that make what? One whole cell. A completely unique, never before seen set of DNA that has come together and has made one cell. Here, let me ask you this question and think through this. What happens from there on out? Mitosis or meiosis? Meiosis. No. You now have 46 chromosomes. You need to continue to go from one cell to two, from two cells to four, to eight, to 16, to 32, to 64, to 128. Am I doing that right? Yeah. So you're going to, you're going to have to double your cells over and over and over and over. Guys, you are made by meiosis. You are made, like your parents were, uh, when your dad made a sperm cell and your mom made an egg cell, that process to make that was meiosis. When they conceived you, you you were one cell, and you started to go through mitosis. Ever since you were conceived, your your cells have been going through mitosis over and over and over, thousands of times. Since we've been in this class, hundreds of thousands of your skin cells have reproduced through the process process of mitosis. So, as a species, we reproduce through meiosis, through sexual reproduction. 
as an organism, our cells reproduce. Our individual cells reproduce through what process? Meiosis. Mitosis. They reproduce through mitosis. Your skin cells, your muscle cells, your kidney cells, um, your cells reproduce, your individual cells reproduce through mitosis. As a species, we reproduce through sexual reproduction or meiosis. Um, so what I want you to do is you are now, I'm going to change this slide so you're not going to be able to see it, but I want you to make your own. Um, first, go ahead and on slide number 12. Slide number 12, go ahead and take the, I'm sorry, slide number 11. Take notes, answer those questions. You know what, tilt it down. Let's go through this one more time, verbally. Tilt it down. What is the purpose of mitosis? Yes, to continue to help us live, to fix cuts, to deal with bruises, all this stuff. That's mitosis. What is it actually producing? What is the product of mitosis? What kind of cells? Somatic. Somatic cells, also known as body cells. All right. How many daughter cells does mitosis make? Two. And what about the chromosomes? Uh, the daughter cells compared to the parent? They're the same. They're, they have 100% of the chromosomes that they started with. That is compared with meiosis. Meiosis, what is the purpose of meiosis? Not what does it make, but what is the purpose? Reproduction. Reproduction, exactly. Continuation of the species. So how many, what kind of cells does meiosis make? What kind of cells does meiosis make? Sex cells. Give me two human examples. What are the human examples? Mom and dad. Nope. Not, they don't make a mom and dad. Mom and dad make these two cells. Sperm cell and egg cell. The two sex cells. And then how many daughter cells for meiosis? Four. Y'all see the four? Does that, y'all remember that? I'm about to take this down. You're going to have to remember. And then last but not least, what, and this is important, what percentage wise of number of chromosomes, how do the chromosomes in the daughter cells compare to the chromosomes in the parent? They divide. By they split. They are half. You have half the number. So 50% of the chromosomes make it to the end of each daughter cell. Any questions? Yes, sir. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, I'm going to erase this. I want you to fill in number 11, slide number 11. Fill in each of those things we just said. Then for slide number 12, I want you to draw on that piece of paper that you have. On a piece of paper, redraw what you see up here on the screen. And I'm going about to erase this screen. Do you understand? Do you understand what you're doing right here? All right. 